Well, hello there, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Hope everybody in watercolor land's doing fine today. So we got a bit of a whimsical, fun, well, they're all fun, okay? But this is a fun, fun video, hopefully. Uh, I'm just in the mood to do something a little more uh, fantastical. And this kind of fits, this has a practical application, all right? Uh, this fits into that video I did a few weeks back on rustic structure. And I kind of alluded to this in that video, that you can actually push that to the point where you're doing something very much out there. Uh, I am uh, doing something that's going to be sort of pushing the boundaries of sci-fi, fantasy, whatever label you want to put to it. But um, just suffice it to say that um, these buildings are really easy to invent. So you can push the boundaries to where they're very make-believe, if you will. And that's what I did. I just wanted to do it. Now, I have some inspiration for this because I have been a longtime follower of a Scottish artist by the name of Ian McKay, or Ian McHugh. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Maybe some of you might... Scottish viewers out there can tell me. He does these really kind of cobbled together, dilapidated looking, floating ships and buildings. He does some that are on the ground too, and that's what I'm doing today. But he's my inspiration. So yeah, I've thrown in a few images here to kind of give you the idea. I've just always really been very intrigued with uh, his style and his, uh, I love his pen and ink work, first of all. He does these amazing trees too. But uh, just been very intrigued with the way he makes these make believe. I mean, like somebody just cobbled these buildings together with scraps they had laying around and turned them into spaceships. So very fanciful. But uh, aside from all that, whether you're into fantasy or not, um, this is going to also be a, a line and wash technique that's very simple, very, I think, uh, very easy to do, great to do for urban. Um, painting you know if you're sketching buildings because you put a lot of the detail in in line now you see i'm going to a great uh bit of length here to get the pencil right because when it comes to the inking i don't want there to be kind of any guessing inks are a lot less forgiving so i'm going to a lot of trouble here to tighten up these pencils as this thing kind of develops and you're kind of seeing where i'm ending up with this I've tightened up the details, I think, to the point that I'm happy with them. I mean, this could even, the way I'm doing it is not quite as fanciful as Ian McHugh's. Uh, these are, this actually could be real. I've seen pictures of mining shacks and old backwoods shacks that are just about as bad as this. So I put it in a setting where... Uh, we have like mostly rocky terrain, maybe like southwestern terrain. This is my Indograph India Ink Fountain Pen. Perfect for this job. Love this pen. And I'm just going through my sketch now and inking in the details. This probably was the most fun part. And if you've done your due diligence in the pencil sketch, uh, this part right here uh, is just fun and easy. Now, let me give you a few tips on inking. Uh, go light to begin with and draw less detail than you think you, you need. It'll be very tempting to just sit and ink in details everywhere. You can always go back and add that. So I, I like to go through and just sort of more gingerly ink everything. Then I'll go back and add deeper, darker areas where I want to um, because it's a little more obvious then. Uh, where it needs it. And I do plan for the line to carry most of the detail and even a good portion of the shading here. But when I get to the watercolor, it's going to be very minimal. Just very minimal. You'll see what I mean. Yeah, so these, <laughs> these are fun. Just let your imagination go wild, you know. It's like, oh, uh, here's a sheet of 10 I found laying around and I'm just going to bend that over the top of this whatever structure and voila we have a building I don't know I just I just kind of let my doodles materialize when it came to this I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about this the only thing I had in mind going into this was 
I thought it'd be cool to have this all sort of built back into a hill on some rocky terrain. That was kind of the only preconceived idea I had. And I knew the style, you know, I was kind of emulating an Ian McHugh sort of style or look, even though I ink differently than he does. I think uh, Ian is um, mostly considered an environmental artist. Now, as I mentioned, he's done some wonderful trees. Uh, he even does these sort of whimsical, cartoony looking characters from time to time. So uh, if you're looking for another category maybe to fit this into, it would be environmental art. Uh, concept artists if you're uh, i know i have uh illustrators out there that watch uh so you're probably familiar with how big environmental uh concept art is right now because of all the video games and uh even for movie and tv they'll hire concept artists to visualize environments and color schemes and that sort of thing so it fits into that category too but for me it's just fun. Good, clean, fun, fanciful, nice illustration for some story, maybe. Uh, rocky backgrounds. Kind of be very similar to what you'd find in New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, places like that. And I picked that just because uh, I wanted something, I don't want to say apocalyptic. I mean, this this is like more of some desert hermit or something you know maybe a some disillusioned miner that just kind of never got past the fact that he couldn't find anything in prospecting through the hills i don't know you know you make up your own story but you know sort of a bare almost moon like mars like landscape that just seemed to go with this kind of building structure to me just fun i also liked uh the way the roundness of the rocks kind of contrasted with these these buildings, but yeah, I, you know, if I if I can get back to Ian's work again, there's just so much out there to explore. Uh, here you see, I'm starting in with the watercolor, and what I want you to pay attention to when I do this is the simplicity. Uh, these colors could be almost anything. Um, I'm doing primarily some scarlet pyrrol, uh, some red iron oxide, very pale, mixed with a little neutral tint, but I'm, I'm making the washes very faint and pale. Just a lot of pink and rusty uh, pinks, um, and maybe some golden colors in there. So anyway, back to what I was saying. What I want you to pay more attention to than the color, though, is uh, once you've got the line detail in here, the simplicity with which the color and the washes can be put in. Uh, pay attention to your highlights, but uh, you really, there's not a lot of heavy rendering that's needed here. That's what's fun to me about doing these. I, I wanted to model the color enough um, that you know, it did hint at where the light is coming from. I sort of want the light coming from the front and the left. So uh, you'll see I'll have some sort of sunny color on the buildings. But I mean, these rocks, have just, you know, some shadow under the buildings here. Maybe down in a few of the crevices. But you don't need to, like, paint every single area where you think there'd be a shadow can just hint at it and keep it simple. Decided to make these rocks uh, in the front hill a little more golden. Uh, and again, super, super simple. I'm just trying to just loosely suggest where the highlights are hitting. Um, and I'm leaving those white. There's a, to me, there's a real, um, if I've done it right, uh, there's a real beauty to the line work. And I like to keep all of the watercolor, especially light, because I want to be able to see uh, the interest and the beauty of the, the line work, the intricacy of it. And the heavier you get the color, the less you're going to see that. So just some very bright 
pale but bright in terms of value color uh, to indicate light hitting the front of these buildings. And occasionally I'm going back and hitting some shadows on the rocks. Then we're going to pull uh, some purple. Kind of fits all into this analogous scheme on the shadow side of everything. Those of you in the southwest and the west, you know how purple uh, the shadows could get, especially in these rocky areas. So we're going to have some cast shadows wherever there's deeper values, you know, and add some more of those purple hues under the buildings. But again, um, this style is so, so useful, especially if you're doing plein air and you're out, you know, sketching some buildings or maybe you're in a historical area and you want to just kind of roughly sketch in some buildings. This is a great quick style. And I keep hearkening back to how simple you can keep these washes. I can vary the color a little bit on the front of those buildings if I want. Have everything a little bit monochromatic. And, and that's fine. And in some heavy lighting situations, you know, lighting situations where the light heavily affects the color of everything, you can leave those uh, fairly monochromatic. By the way, through this, I've been using this Lebensen uh, Large Goat and Synthetic Blend. Lovely, lovely brush. I'll have the Lebensen link down in the description. You've seen me feature those in other videos. And always remember, uh, if you go there, to use my code MIND, M-I-N-D, for a discount. Hope you all enjoyed that. It was a great diversion for me. Great change of pace. Uh, Back to a genre I really, really love, which is fantasy and fantastical sort of make-believe scenes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.